Hey everyone, Adam here, so is our podcast. I had the pleasure of sitting down with Jennifer Martin. Uh, Jennifer is a London-based actress. She studied acting in New Zealand, and she is an expert at accents. It's actually really cool. I was looking up clips from some of her past projects before the interviews when I heard that she was an accent expert, and yeah, she is an accent expert. It's it's really great, because a lot of times in movies, TV shows, even when someone's doing a good job being consistent with an accent, which I think is the most important part, it might not ring so true to the exact location their character's from. Uh, this is purely as a viewer. I am not an expert in accents. But it's really cool going through uh, Jennifer's acting catalog to see everything she can do. Uh, but she was a lot of fun to talk to, a really bright, fun person. And she has a new, new movie coming out. Uh, it's called Sensation. A very interesting movie. I'm going to have a review on that coming up soon, so keep on the lookout. But I hope you enjoy this interview with Jennifer Martin. Hey everyone, Adam here, so is her podcast. I'm sitting down with Jennifer Martin, who has a new movie, Sensation, coming out in a couple weeks. How you doing, Jennifer? I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me. Definitely. Thanks for coming on. Uh, this should be fun. Um, before we get to Sensation, I always like to ask creative people, what was your spark? You know, going way back to the beginning, when did you know you wanted to be an actor, creative? Uh, do you know what? I, I've always wanted to be an actor ever since I was a little child, I think. Um... I used to watch movies like Ace Ventura and Charlie's Angels, and I'd always change the things I wanted to do. So like with Ace Ventura, you know, I wanted to be a pet detective. And then with Charlie's Angels, I wanted to be a Charlie's Angel. And then I realized, oh, they're, they're actually all actors. So <laughs> I was like, with acting, you can be a million things at once. So that's definitely what got me into it. Nice. Those are a couple of uh, unique movies to get your inspiration from. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't heard those. <laughs> So when you first decided to get into performing, I mean, did you do yeah. school plays, community theater? Yeah, I, so um, they had a really good uh, drama program at my um, like high school that I went to, and I got really into that. Um, I think it was when I really wanted to take it seriously, they did a production of The Crucible, and I played Abigail Williams, and just getting it such a juicy role like that, I was like, this is what I want to do forever. Okay. And then... Um, I decided to go to drama school. So I'm originally from New Zealand. Um, I live in London now, but I auditioned for Toy Fakari, which is our national drama school in New Zealand. And I just so happened to get in. Um, and so I did some pretty vigorous training for three years, um, which, you know, it puts you through the ringer. It makes you really want to commit to acting, I think, at the end of it. For, yeah, it sounds intensive. Well, what was the, the program like there? So, um, I mean, it's like, five days a week, nine till four, and then rehearsals in the evenings for shows. Um, and you work on movement, voice, accents, um, scene studies, and um, like a lots of different plays. I'm trying to remember my three years and sum it up. But um, yeah, and then in your third year, you get to do, like you get to write some of your own work, which was pretty incredible. I had, um, I did a solo show, um, called it was Ivy Savior of the Dinosaur, which is about a woman who travels back in time to stop dinosaurs from becoming extinct. Um, and I mean, that show went down really well that it ended up getting picked up by um, our national theater in New Zealand called Capital E, and they turned it into a, a full length show, which I toured for quite a few years. So I mean, oh, nice. yeah, it was an incredible experience. And then from then on out, it's just been acting on the brain for me. Oh, that's awesome. It, it sounds like you really did a lot in those three years. Like you got to yeah. touch into everything. Yeah, for sure. And your first major role before that you said was The Crucible. That's a heavy drama. Was drama kind of your focus or were you just interested in trying it all? Um, interesting. I was interested in trying it all, I think. I definitely had myself down as a very serious actress before I got to drama school. And I just remember one of my tutors being like, um... I said something to him and he was like, look at, I said something quite serious to him. And he said, look at your hands. Like I've got quite big hands. He's like, they're massive. You're funny. You're going to be good in comedy. And from then <laughs> on, I was like, okay. And it was a strange thing to say, but um, yeah. <laughs> then I kind of tried my hand at comedy with it, with the solo show I had to write in my third year. And I just loved it. You know, getting an audience to laugh is, you know, it gets to you like nothing else does. But um, drama school, you know, is uh, mainly uh, theatre. And uh, there is screen studies, but not to the extent as, as theatre is. So, so you're yeah. 
your three years of um, education was mostly on the stage? Yeah, yeah. I think that's quite standard for drama schools to focus on um, stage while you're learning. Um, but I always wanted to do screen work, I think. So when I got out of drama school, that was definitely my focus and drive. Yeah. It's funny you were, I mean, maybe not funny, but you were such a, you were so focused on being serious, but your inspirations were two yeah, flat out yeah, comedies. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I just, um, I don't know why it was. I think when you think about actors and you think about Oscar winners and all of that kind of thing, you think, oh yes, the serious roles. But actually the ones that are most fun and the ones that I really want to play are, you know, often my inspiration is found in comedy. Like another film I can watch over and over and over again is Step Brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, you know, to do a film like that, they must have had so much fun. And yeah. those characters and the acting is incredible in it. Yeah, and that's something that you kind of notice when you watch a lot of movies that comedy and drama are, they're, they're right next door to each other. Exactly. Like if you can make people laugh in a comedy, you could probably get them to feel whatever emotion you want them to feel. Yeah, that's something that they used to always say to us at drama school, you know, you make them laugh and they will cry with you. But, yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so when you transitioned from focusing on the stage more, like with your education, everything mm -hmm. to working in front of a camera, did you find that a hard transition? Um, I mean, there's definitely things that change. Like on, on stage, everything is slightly bigger and, um, screen, it's obviously much smaller and intricate. Um, and you know, like when you, when you're doing screen work, everything is shot scene by scene and obviously like um, most of the time it's not chronological. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. Whereas with, a, with theater work, you know, it's much bigger and you rehearse an entire play. So you're with a character from start to finish with each performance every night. Um, so there's those um, differences that, you know, I, I don't know if I would say I'd find it hard, but like it's, um, I, sorry, I wouldn't say that I found it hard, but just uh, like jumping. They're, they're two completely different things, I think. But I think it's uh, most actors can transition through to um, to, to do both. Quite yeah, easy. as an outsider looking in, I feel like theater would be much harder. <laughs> yeah, well, if you forget your lines in theater, you have to just fix yeah. it on the spot. Which <laughs> you can't can be just a take it again. Fun, but um, yeah. With screen work, you just say that it's cut and start again. But the one thing that I love about screen, I think that you don't have a theater is that after you do the acting and you do the filming and everything like that, you get to wait and then the film comes out and you get to keep it forever. But with theater, you know, it's opening night and the show runs and then it's done, you know, so you mm -hmm. don't get to hang on to something. Yeah, you get the memories, but yeah, there's there's no like tangible yeah, yeah. go back and watch it five yeah, years later. <laughs> memories, uh, memories are great, but I like to have something to hang on to. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a it's a really good point that I didn't really consider. So when you first um, made the transition, how did you go about? Uh, did you have to? I mean, I know over here the system is you find an agent, you go out on auditions. You know, you do as many auditions as you can, I guess. And yeah. Los Angeles or New York, is it kind of the same thing over there? Yeah, so definitely. So um, for in New Zealand, when I graduated, I actually already had an agent um, that I was that I'd been with for quite a while, and she tends to get um, like she just pushed me for screen work. Um, and so yeah, you go out on auditions, you book jobs, you film them, and you know. Then I came to London like six years ago, and it's the same. You know, you get an agent, and the agent sends you auditions, and you go and you try and book them. Um, and I mean, I try and hustle my own work as well. Mm -hmm. So I will write to casting directors and directors um, that I really like um, if I've seen something that they've done and been like, hey, do you need an actor? <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's, yeah, that's how it's done. It's a, a job that you definitely have to have that kind of hustle for, I imagine. Yeah, for sure, because there's, there's thousands of us. <laughs> do you find the um, you personally going after the projects, does that seem to work out for you or is it just always well, a toss-up I mean it is a toss-up so sensation that's what happened I saw um Martin Groff's previous film excursion on Amazon and then I saw that he was casting for this film and I sent him quite a few emails to try and get an audition and then he just so happened to reply to one and um, then gave me a casting through it for it but my agent had been pushing me for it but unfortunately there's, because there's so many actors sometimes you can get lost in submissions. So I think to go, to go go out of your way to get in contact with people, if you really want to work with them, it can, it can work out really well. 
Yeah. And there you go. That's good advice for people listening who are trying to get their thing started. It's just not happening. It's like, take it into your own hands. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I think I sent him like two or three emails. <laughs> but, you know, it worked. Yeah. You got the audition, so you can't say exactly. that. Uh... <laughs> and the part. Yeah. And the part, even better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, since we brought it up, do you want to get into sensation? Yeah, sure. Okay. So you got yourself the role, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it was the director that brought you into it, you said? Yeah. So you hadn't read the script before you said, hey, I want to try out? Or you had no, you? Well, I'd read the um, like the summary of the film and then the... Like they would get like a little brief of the character. So I saw those up on like, we've got a casting site here in London, uh, in England called um, Spotlight. So it all goes up on that. And I saw that and I thought, oh, such a cool character. I really want to audition. So that's how I saw it and saw what the, the film was going to be about and what the character was going to be about. And that really drove me to get in contact with him. Oh, that's great. So you had time to prepare for that role specifically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would have taken any role, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Sensation, for people who don't know, I mean, it's it's a lot of really big concepts. Did you find that harder to get into the character to try to wrap everything that she knew was going on into it? Yeah, um, I, I mean, definitely. So May is quite an, like an otherworldly character, um, who, when you see her, she's kind of almost trapped in a different time period to these other characters that you see. So, I mean, it, it definitely is hard to kind of wrap your head around such a big concept because um, I don't want to give too much away, but, you know, there's there's two versions of most of the characters in the film. Um, and so it's really kind of getting into one of those versions of that character and then the other version of that character and how they kind of overlap um, and then fit into this world that um, they have. Yeah, okay. And and you're right, it's hard to talk a lot about it without giving stuff away. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> but I guess that's that's a good thing. You know, you want to go in yeah, and be surprised. Exactly. You don't want to see the same thing you've always seen. So was that the uniqueness of it a big draw also? Yeah, I think so. And also, do you know what? It's um, It's got some really good female characters in this film. And often when you see, like, well, for me anyway, seeing a lot of castings go up and they, the female lead is kind of not a huge part of the film. But this one has, like, multiple female leads that are, like, dominating in the film and they're in it the whole way through. And they're just really intricately well-written characters. Um, so when I, when... I read the brief. I can't remember exactly what it said, but it was like, um, I was like, I've got to play that part. I've got to play May. Nice. That's got to be such a surreal, amazing feeling when you want to work with somebody, you read the script, you like the part, you like that individual character, yeah. and then you nail it. Yeah, of course. Like, And it happened so fast. I remember um, I just sent off a self-tape and then um, with all my agent's details and everything. And then like it was a day later, my agent was like, yeah, they want you for the part. And oh, wow. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> that was really fast. But, yeah. yeah it, you know, <laughs> an amazing feeling. I think I was like silent on the phone for a little while because I was uh, in disbelief that it had happened so fast. That's awesome. Yeah, because yeah. I, I imagine usually you're waiting maybe a second audition maybe a third audition and it's like are we gonna yeah. do this or <laughs> yeah no martin doesn't muck around <laughs> awesome and how was that well actually first what year was the audition process because you know last year was kind of <laughs> uh so it was all 2019 so i think okay. we auditioned in in the start of june and then no july in the start of july and then we were shooting from mid-july Oh, so you got the part within a day, then you were shooting two weeks yeah. later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I thought maybe it was just me, but when I met all of the other actors on the film, they're like, no, it was us too. <laughs> so it was um, a really fast turnaround casting process. Nice. And I guess with the way the movie was shot and all the uh, time and location jumps and things like that, I mean, the director yeah. had to have this thing mapped in his head, like inside, you know, forward, backward, whatever you want to say. Yeah. So he probably like, you know, saw you. Yes, you're May. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I think I remember speaking to him about it after when we were like sat down after filming one night. And because um, um, he said he found it hard to find May. And I was like, well, if you'd replied to my first email, you wouldn't have. 
been that hard. It wouldn't have been that hard because um, I think they saw quite a few different actresses for it. And he was like, well, I saw your photo that in the second email that you sent me. And I was like, oh, I think that could be our May. Um, so, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. He <laughs> saw you. and <laughs> Yeah, so he had the image in his head and then that was uh, that was what it was. That's perfect. And what was that uh, the shooting like? Was it a really quick, fast paced kind of? Yeah, it was. It was like uh, we were shooting quite fast, very fast, as you do. I think we shot over a period of just over three weeks. Um, half of the time was out in Suffolk at this amazing mansion that looks like something out of X-Men. And um, the rest of the time was in central London. OK, wow. So, yeah, two different environments, like one in the middle of the countryside with no one else around and then one in the central London, really, really busy. All the locations, I was like, man, this guy spent some money getting these places. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, even the train, you had the train in the, the the first shot, you weren't there, but like he had the train to himself. And then, like you mm. said, that mansion was insane and the, the grounds around it, and then right in the middle of London is... Yeah, and we were staying out there as well, which was like um, absolute heaven. So you got a kind of a summer camp experience. <laughs> yeah, it was. And it was so nice just like um, staying on location with a lot of other actors. Um, it was a lot of fun. I've made some really good friends from the whole process as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. W was the shoot so fast that you felt like you were kind of just getting to know everybody and just getting into it? And they're like, okay, that's a wrap. <laughs> um. Do you know what? I don't think so. I think because of the fact that we were living together at the same time. So you were in each other's spaces all the time. Okay. And this is obviously before COVID. So we right. couldn't be in each other's spaces. So, you know, we would film all day and then we would have dinner together, uh, you know, sitting outside and relax and chat. And then, you know, the same thing would happen the next day. So it did feel like that we'd known each other for a long time by the end of the shoot. I think the London part of it was a bit different because we obviously all go home at the end of the shoot. Um, mm -hmm. But having that that period in Suffolk to start with, I think everyone bonded really well. That's great. Did you find when you were filming it because, uh, you know, like we said, TVs and movies are usually shot per location or, you know, they kind of knock things out very efficiently. Mm -hmm. Did you have a firm grasp of how the movie was going to turn out while you were shooting it um a little bit but I mean when I saw it I was like wow because they, you obviously don't see all the the um the effects and that mm -hmm. kind of thing that's added to it at the end and that kind of brought it up to a different level for me seeing all of the all of that kind of stuff that had been added to the film um and, you know, scenes change and see they're edited slightly different to how we shot them. Things are placed in different orders. Uh, so it was still like quite surprising watching it for the first time. That's but probably a fun was, experience. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Did you get to see it with an audience? No, unfortunately uh -huh. not because I was like, it was locked down. So yeah. Um, yeah, everyone kind of got sent to like a cast and crew screener from the director. That's that so cool. Ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> And now you get to do the digital rounds. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind the digital thing because if it was just like in-person conventions or screenings, you know, I wouldn't have gotten the opportunity. So yeah, true. We're on opposite sides of the world. So yeah, silver lining. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was very uh, sci-fi, high concept, like we were saying. Mm -hmm. Have you dove into those waters previously? No, I haven't actually. I haven't done anything. I mean, I did a short film that was sci-fi quite a few years ago, but nothing of this scale. Um, like previously, it had just been quite quite serious dramas and period dramas that I'd done. But having a, working on a sci-fi was amazing because obviously, the, like the com um, the concept is like we were talking about before, very complex. So wrapping your head around something like this. And it's kind of half in our world and then half in uh, an alternate kind of world. Um, yeah. Awesome. So you had a lot of fun with that. Get to yeah, yeah, you. lots of fun. Nice. Um, and you also mentioned early on in our conversation that mm -hmm. you wrote, you you know, mounted your own stage play. Yeah. Have you been taking advantage of the, the downtime and lockdown and writing? Are you still doing that? Yeah, I have actually. I've... Um, I started writing a feature film, um, I think it was partway through lockdown last year. And I mean, I've been doing it like very slowly and it's kind mm -hmm. of just for me at the moment, but it's something to occupy my mind and keep busy. But um, 
I would like eventually like to do something with it. Um, and it's kind of a, a fantasy-ish uh, style film. Nice. Would you yeah. want to direct also? No, I'd want to star in it. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Getting be behind the camera is not really something you're looking for? I mean, not yet. Uh, I like writing, but at the moment, I, you know, acting, I'm single focused. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I imagine acting and directing would just be. Yeah, I lot. don't think I could do it all. <laughs> <laughs> I know some people do, and I, I can't wrap my head around it. Yeah, I know. I mean, I've been on a, a film before where the, um, the actors, were, well, an actor was also directing, and it's a crazy process. Like, we film, and then he stops and watches it, and then we go back and film. So it's a, a whole different ball game, I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's awesome that you are, I mean, nobody likes the lockdown. We're all ready for it to be over. <laughs> yeah. But it's good that you found a way to keep your creative spark alive and keep moving. And Yeah, because I think, I mean, I have had a few um, acting jobs, but not as many as you normally would, I think. Sure. Far and few between. But hopefully, I think things are starting to slowly unlock here anyway, and so things might start picking up again. Yeah, have you been doing a lot of, um, like, self-tape? video yeah, auditions recently, quite a few I mean I think self-tapes were becoming quite a huge thing before lockdown but now I think it's like cemented as the the way things will be from for first round auditions from now on how do you feel about that process do you prefer the in-person audition I don't know there's pluses and negatives I think because you know with a self-tape you can control everything mm -hmm. like you know, if you go in for an audition and your hair looks bad or something, you're not going to know because there's someone else is on the other side of the camera. Or if you make a mistake, you can't necessarily do a retake, which you can with self-taping. However, with being in the room, you get feedback and direction. And so the casting director can see how you can adapt and change, um, which you don't get with a self-tape. Yeah. So it's kind of, it leaves it completely up to your interpretation. Obviously, you get some information but you make certain choices as an actor and um, that's what they're going to get. They can't really feed back to you. I mean, they could, and like they will in second round or if you do it via Zoom, but that's another one as well. Sure, yeah. Do you find the Zoom thing works? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think with, with, when Wi-Fi is good, yes. There you go, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess it's stuttery and jittery and you're trying to emote something. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. No like, Are you still there? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it can, it does work. And it's, I mean, it, it's quite genius that they've come up with like this way of working, I think, to get around the the restrictions of being in this pandemic, for sure. That's true. Yeah. No one chose for it to be Zoom auditions, really. It just, is there anything, um, maybe you can't talk about it, but anything pending that you're really been working hard on, or maybe a self tape you have coming up? Um, I mean, I did just do a self-take for something that I'm really excited about, but like with lots of things you can't really say. Can't really talk about it, yeah. Yeah, that's the problem, but it's a really cool character. Okay. And I did just work on um, this film called Code of Silence with a, a production company that I really like based in like, um UK, um, which was a lot of fun, and it follows like the Cray twins. Um, okay. And so that was a lot of fun. Um, and last year I did this short film um with a really uh, um, amazing director called India Innes Levy. And she, um, uh, so, and it's narrated by one of my all time favorite actors, uh, Bill Nighy. And so that's going to be coming out soon. So, I mean, I'm excited. Those little things are kind of keeping me going. Not that to go off on another tangent instead of sensation, but just what No, I'm no, asking. sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just wanted to talk about what's, what else is brewing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was just thinking as I was talking about that, maybe that's not the right time. But yeah, these are definitely brewing. Awesome. That's good. That's good. It's your business is definitely one that you got to keep the irons in the fire and. Yeah, keep absolutely. Moving. Yeah. But if you want to get back to sensation, we can do that. Just <laughs> <laughs> thinking, maybe I shouldn't be saying, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> so was there anything in sensation that um, you got to do for the first time that was kind of like a, a bucket list check thing? Like, oh, I, I got to do. I think, you know, shooting in central London on the top of a bus, probably. It was, I, I wasn't necessarily on my bucket list before, but definitely it was something that when we were doing it, I was like, this is so cool. And I don't know mm. if I'll ever be able to do this again. And we just had like Martin, our um, like fabulous director up there directing while the actors are kind of 
And it looks like you can see a shot of it in the trailer, so it's not giving anything away, but it looks really like elegant and um, like we're in complete control, but actually driving through this bus and it's quite an old fashioned bus, you can feel all the bumps. So they kind of had us like strapped in. So no one was gonna fall and that kind of thing. Wow, okay, that is kind of cool. And, and getting access like that in a place like London that's always so crowded, that mm. had to be surreal. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I don't really know the production side of it and how they managed to do that, but mm -hmm. um, definitely like getting to work in some of the places that we did, you know, it doesn't come around a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess the same thing would go with that mansion, like just to be able to hang out and yeah, absolutely. spend that much time <laughs> kind of more or less alone. I mean, you had your cast and crew, but... <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, was there anything else with Sensation that maybe it wasn't like a bucket list item that you didn't want to do or you didn't know you wanted to do that you got to or conversely was there something that you were maybe a little apprehensive and you just kind of had to dive in head first i mean maybe not apprehensive but working with some of the dialogue especially because it's like science fiction um dialogue and it's kind of getting your mouth around all of these really technical terms that don't really seem like it's not a natural thing that you'd have in conversation mm -hmm. so that was like um a challenge but one that I really liked um I think also um you know like switching between these these kind of two different versions of characters like I was talking earlier about um that was kind of a bucket list thing I think um kind of taking on something like that was that hard to keep straight? Like, okay, which version of May am I in this scene? <laughs> well, luckily, like we had, I had different costumes, so that was uh, kind okay, of that does help. the different, the different um, versions of May. But yeah, yeah. Well, that had to be fun too, then, because you you get two for one. Yeah, and I think also, you know, having my um, hair and makeup done because I've got quite curly hair naturally, but in the film, it's kind of straightened and styled into this nineteen twenties kind of look. You know, having um. Uh, a look like that and working like that it was it was really cool yeah were you a long time in that hair and makeup uh chair yeah, every day quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> is that when you uh go over your lines and check your yeah, socials and... Go over lines, like have a chat with um emily my co-star because we were usually scheduled for the same time so there was that and um yeah, going lines, drilling lines, and just enjoying yourself having your makeup done because I think it's quite a nice, a nice process. There you go. Yeah, a little bit of pampering before work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, going back to what you were saying about the the sci fi dialogue being something that you would never normally say is yeah, it's funny you mentioned that because there are movies that as you're watching it, it all makes sense. It's all there. I mean, you know, sensation exa is exactly one of them. But if you take any of those lines out on their own, is like, what is, what am I saying? <laughs> Was yeah. there one that gave you more trouble, like in particular, like one that stands out that maybe you were like, oh, finally, I got it. Um, I'm just trying to think. I think some of the um, the dialogue about sending and receiving um, uh, and controlling information. There's, um, I say. Um, I say a couple of phrases like this all the time and it's kind of just getting it in, making sure it's in like the right order. Um, I know it sounds like quite a simple line, but sometimes, uh, cause it's like the, the way the film works and it's quite a, it's quite a integral part of the concept, this um, sending, receiving and controlling information. So there was that, I think. Um, I'm just trying to think, it's been a while since we shot. So I don't know if I can That's remember. That's true, yeah, I'm kind of putting life. on the spot for the memory no, two years right. ago, sorry. Yeah, I just yeah, watched no, it yesterday, no. so. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Is the, the movie doing any um, film festivals? I'm not sure, I don't think so. I think it's um it's an Amazon release. Oh, okay, so it'll, yeah. everyone will be able to see it. Yeah, everyone will be able to see it all at once. That's great. And uh, I have in the, the ticker on the bottom there, it's April 16th, I think that's international. Yes, I believe so as well. Everywhere the same day. That's cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, before I stop eating up your whole evening, is there anything else you wanted to promote? You want to give people your social medias or anything like that? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm at Jen Martian, like the alien. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm the same, same on Twitter. I'm not that active on Twitter, but Instagram, I'm quite active. Oh, there you go. Yeah. 
Um, actually, with with the social media stuff. Sorry, I know I said I'd let you go, but now I've no, no, question. no. <laughs> uh, do you find that in today's day and age, with the popularity of social media and stuff, you kind of have to almost be your own brand? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I didn't really take social media that seriously until maybe a few years ago. And actually, I realized it's it's actually quite important, especially as like an actor, because people will often go on and look at you to see how you look and get a feel for you. Um, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes when it comes to like casting and acting and, and it's a good way to promote films as well, you know, like um, especially independent films, which I do quite a lot of, um, you plaster them on social media so people can see them. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And you get to interact with your fans one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, exactly. They can message you and con like comment on your photos. And it does kind of, I think, bridge the gap between, like, I think, for me anyway, like, you've got this connection with people that, like, for me, looking at other actors that I really like, you can follow them on social media and see what they're up to. So it does bridge that gap for people so they can feel more involved and everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. It's an interesting concept, especially because a lot of people have different takes. Like, some people are like you were like, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I do indie film. It's great to there's a gap this and that and then i i asked somebody else if they thought it was kind of like branding and there's like nope i was like oh okay i guess end the conversation <laughs> <laughs> end of conversation so, yeah I, I just find that interesting so i wanted to see what your take on it was yeah i mean i definitely think to some people it's a big thing and for others not so much it just depends on how different people work yeah yeah uh it it seems like it's here to stay so people yeah, should probably yeah, jump exactly. on board so might as well embrace it <laughs> exactly yeah well thank you so much again for coming on that was a lot of fun uh everyone yeah. check out sensation april 16th amazing yeah and also just before i go i promised yeah. um my co-star emily wyatt who plays nadia to give her a shout out and she's incredible in the film so come along and see it on april 16th awesome thank you yeah thank you I'd like to thank Jennifer Martin one more time for coming on the podcast to talk to me. Uh, I had a great time with that conversation. You should check out her work. A lot of her stuff is actually available on Amazon Prime. So get on it and keep on the lookout for her newest movie, Sensation. Make sure you listen to So Wizard podcast every single week, wherever you get your podcasts. So Wizard podcast can also be found on Patreon, where for as little as $1 a month, you get multiple monthly bonus shows. SoWizardPodcast.com is your resource for reviews, recommendations, merchandise, videos, and more. And I forgot to do it at the top of this whole spiel, but please remember to like and subscribe. A lot more interviews, a lot more new movie coverage coming your way. Booking new stuff all the time. It's very exciting. You're not going to want to miss out, so definitely make sure you subscribe. We love hearing feedback, so drop some out in the comments. Leave us something on social media. All of our accounts can be found after the show and in the show notes. And on a more personal note, a really good friend and I released a comic book in January of this year. It's called Social Studies. Social Studies is a slice-of-life comedy comic that kind of takes a funny look at the uh, high school experience, and we do it all through the twisted prism of the 90s cartoons that we grew up on and loved so much. You can check it out at socialstudiescomic.com. I appreciate it. Thanks.